gets me through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. I have a question for you. You're a sushi train regular. Yep. How often are you hitting it up with your son, Henry? Well, it depends on his fancies, but I'd say usually uh, once a week. Once a week? So uh, usually on a Wednesday or a Thursday straight after school. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And how many plates are we doing? Well, that is a very good question. He ranges from two to three plates. Okay. He likes the, I don't know how to say it, edamame beans. That's <laughs> <laughs> not how you say it, is it? Edamani? Edamani beans? He likes the green beans. Let's just call it that. And then we're very, very adventurous, my son and I. He sort of, um, you know, jumps between the chicken teriyaki or the tuna and avocado because, you know, okay. we're Australian people who like sushi. We're okay. so uneducated with our palates. Can I just clap this out for you? Edamame. Edamame. Edama- <laughs> green beans. Ed, uh, green beans. <laughs> Why do all men's? My husband struggles with that word as well. Edamame. Yeah, they roll their eyes when we order the green beans. Oh, my God. I think he's called them the enema beans before as well. (laughs) (laughs) He says it so quickly, though, as well, that they just go, okay, he must have said edamame beans. (laughs) Okay, so I've discovered that a Wednesday night at a sushi train is the busiest place on earth. Do you find that? Well, we go early. We oh. go straight after school. So oh. we get there about four-ish. Okay. Yeah, super early dinner because yeah, the rush at Welland oh, is intense. Oh, man. It was a lot. So I took it, not to the Welland one, um, but I took my 13-year-old to our local the other night and oh, wowee. It was so bad that there was no booth. There was not even any bar stools. They sort of crammed us in the corner on a makeshift table with yeah. a couple of stools chucked in there. So we were helping ourselves, but then Greg was at home with the five-year-old and so we had to order some takeaway on top of the hectic scenes that are attacking the sushi train with a lot of people in it right then they came around and they said what would you like for takeaway and i was pointing on the menu you know the big plastic menu god it can be confusing yeah don't you think yeah absolutely because i'm like all i can see Mm. is two options yeah teriyaki chicken (laughs) or tuna and avocado (laughs) (laughs) everything else is a blurt and what sort of beans (laughs) and the green beans (laughs) So I ordered two takeaway, six pieces of cucumber rolls for the five-year-old and six pieces of the tuna. Mm -hmm. Okay, 25 minutes later, we're still sitting there waiting for our takeaway. And she came up and she said, I'm so sorry, it's taking so long. We don't have time to make it. Would you like a free can of drink? And I was like thinking, what do you mean you don't have time to make it? It's like six cucumber rolls and six pieces of tuna. That guy's literally over there having a cigarette. <laughs> so, no, that guy wasn't over there having a cigarette. He was in the middle making a massive platter. What she thought I had said is six times six of cucumber rolls oh my and gosh. two times lots of tuna. So what should have been 12 pieces became 48 pieces <laughs> of tuna. 48 <laughs> pieces. And the man, the poor man, looked like he'd lost the will to live. He's like, why, how, there's no human on earth that can eat this amount of sushi. Yeah. Look at her over there. <laughs> Jeez, where did she put it all? <laughs> <laughs> she ain't a sumo wrestler. Hungry over here. 3,000 bits of sushi. Thanks very much. Anyway, in an effort to get us out of there, she said, we won't charge you, just get out. <laughs> so you took the sushi? I took a whole platter of sushi. <laughs> My gosh, that's how you score yourself free sushi. You overload the system. No, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. And the worst part about this story is Peyton had loaded up on all the condiments, like the teriyaki sauce. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? You can't do that. She goes, it's for my lunch tomorrow. you got to get your money's worth. 13, 24, 10. When did you overorder? Mark from Glenelg South. What happened? Oh, look, well, this is going back a few years ago when I was hairdressing in Sydney. Yeah. And I had to order some stock for the salon. So I was ordering per- uh, ordering perm solution. <laughs> and uh, instead of order- ordering like 12 units of four particular types of um, perm solutions, because there's one for resistant, one for normal, one for sensitised, and one for highly sensitised. Yes. So instead of ordering 12 units, I ordered 12 boxes of each one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Everyone in Sydney could have had a perm in our salon. Everybody. <laughs> hey, Mark. She was not. My boss was not a happy camper. But, but is that the is that something that you could use? Like, can can you store it though? Like at least. Well, you can. But I mean, like you know, when you're in a salon with about five people and you've got you know twelve boxes of O solution, twelve boxes of one solution, twelve boxes of one plus solution, twelve boxes of two solution, and twelve boxes of three. It's like, um, oh my lordy, lordy. <laughs> Oh, my yeah. gosh, that is excellent.
And don't you reckon, Mark, if we were ever to engage in chemical warfare with another country, you could use perming solution because that stuff is so strong. (laughs) We would certainly win the war against China. We could turn everybody curly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Oh, tough act to follow, but let's go to Albany. Good morning to you, Chloe. Chloe, what did you overorder? Uh, may I say that this was Cole's fault and not mine? Okay. I had to make I had to make guacamole for a big family function, and when I say I mean lots of guacamole, so I ordered lots of avocados, and instead of getting those, they substituted it with about thirty onions. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Do you, Chloe, we go through the same situation. My wife's like, "How? Like, are they taking the you know what when some of the substitutions they throw in? They're like, oh no, avocados, all good. Let's chuck in some onions." Like, <laughs> what am I meant to do with thirty onions? Oh, that's a good I'm not question. really sure unless you. Unless you're former Prime Minister Tony Abbott, I'm not sure. Just you just, them wrong. Yeah. Guacamagnoli, something like that. Guacamagnoli. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you so much, Chloe. Oh, our boy oh, Gussie. Here he is. Good it's morning, Gussie. Gussie. From Hi, Jordan. Hi, Jordan. Yeah. How are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? Good. What happened? Well, who ordered, overordered in your house? So my mum was at the supercar racing. Yes. The oh the horse racing. Sorry. Oh my yeah. My back. <laughs> um, and she was ordering pizza yeah. off of the Domino's app. Yep. She and she was so drunk. <laughs> she ordered ten pizzas <laughs> and two go. I mean ten ten uh, uh garlic bread. Yeah. For two kids. <laughs> <laughs> It's Gussie. Oh, he hey, must you're... have had like sixteen beers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, but... uh, your beautiful mum, Gussie Claire, does a fantastic oh, job. Yeah. But uh, look, I think you got away from her that night. Perhaps. Hey, Gussie, at least you got leftover pizza, Dale, for the rest of the week. Yeah, we had uh, leftover lunches for the week. And there was <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> not legend. a bad thing. Hey, Gussie, can we send you along to Wall Cinemas with a family pass? Yes, please. You absolute yeah. little champion. Can we give? Can we give? Also, Mark a family pass to Wallace Cinemas as well because Mark, you deserve a family pass to go see the movie. Good on you, Mark. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, you, yes. And also, fabulous, fabulous. Oh, beautiful. Well done. Thank you so much for glo- for saving saving any global future wars by offering to absolutely. to permit. Oh, Curl up and die, doll. Curl up and die. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Taking all our off-air conversations onto the air. 10 News First weather presenter, Tiff Horn. Squeegeeing the shower screens. You know what's not sexy? Lime scale. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Zoe. I've gained something from my latest breakup. A house plant. That's <laughs> right. I feel unused in this space. <laughs> Let's go, girls. It's Chick Chat on Nova 919. Yeah, it is. Uh, no producer Zoe this morning. No. Um, so, look, I think I'm going to jump into producer Zoe's um, shoes and, and just, you know, jump in for Chick Chat, which is a really good opportunity for myself, uh-huh. you, Joes, yep. and you, Tiff, from mm. 10 News First, just to talk womanly things, <laughs> just to chew the fat, you know? Yeah. What's on our mind, ladies? Well, you're taking the mickey, but you are <laughs> the very inspiration for this week's Chick Chat, by the way, which is developing a theme. Last week we were talking about first kisses. Mm. And this week, we're talking about passing. Yee! Picked it up and off. Remember Holly Valance? Oh, how could I forget? This, this is this? some of her best work, this by is, the way. This, this is her absolutely. only work, arguably. This is her own Maybe. Some of her best work. <laughs> so true. All right. Um, now, this has come about, Tiff, because mm. we were having a conversation, Hazy and I, and he was very, very vehemently saying how he loves a pash with his wife, Carmen. Oh, oh that's it. nice. But sometimes I'll just, I'll just practice pash my arm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> just gumming <laughs> away. Not aggressive. That was me. I was a 14 year old. I was going to say, did yeah. you do that into your pillow? Yeah. You pashed your pillow? <laughs> I oh. pashed your pillow. Yeah. But I think we all pashed our arm as youngsters at one stage for a bit of practice. No. 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 no, no. no I th- sorry, I meant to say that. I don't think any of us did that. <laughs> <laughs> so you love a good pash and, and you regularly try and kiss your wife and she's not about it. Yeah, she's what not, do you mean? She's not about it at all. So, and obviously she has long days. She's got three kids. Yeah. Oh no, you gosh. have three. You both have three. Three kids. Oh, Damn it. Let me try that again. We have three kids. I don't see. Do you know what? Who's the father of her three kids? I Andrew don't know. Because I, I work so much that oh. I don't see them. So sometimes yeah. I come home and I introduce myself. Mm. But she's had all day with the kids yes. and she's probably not feeling her most attractive <laughs> and freshest. Oh. 
<laughs> Even though I think she looks unbelievable yeah. and I'm trying to go for a kiss and Cara's not for it. No. So what does she do? I understand. She just sort of Rebuffs aggressively, <laughs> aggressively yeah. pulls away. Yeah. That's completely fine. <laughs> mm. uh, but look, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, are you? And 100%. Okay. I can, with my hand on my heart, say I can't remember the last time Greggy and I had a proper patch. What do you mean? I don't, we don't patch. We're married. We've been together oh, for... that doesn't stop you. We've been together for... 13 years. Give it a go. I reckon you'd like it. Do you, no, because he... I don't know how to say this. Oh, he's a bad <laughs> and passion. I don't, no, he's not a bad <gasps> passion. Oh, I didn't say so that. He's oh. a bad kisser. I did, oh. did not say That's that. That's not surprise That's me at all. That's a scandal, Joe. I, I just... You know, surprise me. You know how he... <laughs> He sort of passes like he dances, like oh. a, just a tiny bit uncoordinated. Oh. Aggressively jerky. So we can't quite get the timing movements. right, I don't think. So what about when you're, you know, what? having special Jodie and Greggy, Greggy time? cuddles? Yeah. Uh, no. Nah. What? You nah. just nah. stare at each other? <laughs> just, just, <laughs> <laughs> what, what happens? Just flat on top, just staring, just staring, eyes wide open. like You just do what has to be done. What, what do you mean? Like, traditional methods? Or are you like those sea creatures? Does, does <laughs> Greg just, <laughs> just sort of release something in the ocean? <laughs> <and you> just, <laughs> You float around, around and... Like, what's going on here? Why is there no kissing? That's you strange. Don't, you don't have to passion to be able to do that. You do, actually. No, you don't. No, 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 I know technically rule. speaking, you, you can get through without passion. No. That's very like Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Yeah. Where you're like, you're not allowed to kiss me, Greg. Well, that's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing he's such a bad passion. It's like... It's like <laughs> Stop! It's, like, that. it's you, like kissing a snake. No, the snake. Like, no like he's just a fast talker, fast kisser. This is unbelievable. I would have predicted in this space that I'd be the one who isn't pashing, but mm. I'm very much into it, and you'd be the one who is, but it's it's a little no, opposite. No, because day. we mm. all know you're like a horny little 14-year-old teenager. <laughs> 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 all right. Okay, then. Who told you that? <laughs> Sally from Port Norlogo. Good morning. Morning. Are you to pash or not to pash, Sal? I haven't got time for that. <laughs> 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 what does that even mean? <laughs> I'm so like, with you. I, like, my husband would love to pass me what all day long. Like, he's full on right into it. I haven't got time. Yeah. I've got things to do. Yes. Let's get this job done and off I trot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It should make you feel good, though, Sally, that you've got a husband who just finds you wildly attractive. I love that he attractive. still wants to get right into it. I love that he loves that. Yeah. Yes, Sally, do you find that when, like, yeah. things get down to passing and all that sort of stuff, your mind goes a thousand miles an hour, like, oh, my God, there's still dishes in the sink. I haven't hung out the washing. I've got to pick up the kids I need to put minutes. the bins out. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to pick up my son. Let's get this done before he comes home so he doesn't know we've done it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Stuff like that. Your father, he's on the naughty list. No! Jody and Hazy's naughty at 640. Nothing, nothing. So it's a space for us to be maybe just a little bit blue, a bit, bit risque before mm. we straighten up after 7 o'clock. But this particular episode, it's more of a passion piece for you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all make sense in a matter of seconds. Okay, so you mentioned to me yesterday that you would start your Christmas shopping on the 24th of December. Mm -hmm. There's no need because I have discovered what you can buy your wife, Cara, for Christmas. What's that? Okay, so Love Honey have released their annual, their annual Indulge Toy Advent Calendar for 2024. Yes, finally. 12 pieces. It's got, um, it's not suitable for the radio. What's in those 12 pieces? <laughs> well, can you, can you sort of, how professional and how good are you with words? Um, not overly good. Should I try and sort of improvise as I go along? Yes. Okay, so there's the Love Honey 24 Day Womanizer Couples <clears throat> toy. What, what uh, toy? Uh, I don't know. The uh, uh, Wild Weekend Mega Couples toy kit. Uh, there's the first time. Fun starter kit. What's that mean? Is oh stop it! Don't back me into a corner. And also, is this a daily thing? Yeah. So you get every one every day. day. You get one every day for twelve days. Who are these people? Oh, they're clever. That's what they are. Retails at three hundred ninety-one dollars, down to one hundred sixty-nine. If you don't mind. There you go. Goodness, Price is right. Goodness gracious. Good stuff. There are things in there that I wouldn't even know what to do with. For goodness sake. But it's not stopping me from wanting one. Hmm. So it's right at the top of your Christmas wish list. I mentioned it to my husband last night. I said, oh, hey, I found what you can give me for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and at the time, we were, obviously weren't explaining what was in the Love Honey 
um, advent calendar. But we'd just been to Coles and got the kids their advent calendar. Oh my gosh! Right. So they they got their little Cadbury chocolates one, and and the five year old was sitting on the couch at the time. And she goes to me, she said, oh, no, what if our advent calendars get mixed up? Oh, my very goodness. <laughs> she goes, how are we supposed to tell the difference? <laughs> oh, you'll know. Still to come with Jody and Hazy on Adelaide's Nova 919. It doesn't taste like chocolate at all, does oh, it? Oh, it's certainly not $4 from the chocolate department at Coles either. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Christmas slash childhood ruined. Oh, there's probably chocolate in there, though, somewhere. Mm. Somewhere. Somewhere. Mm. Oh, you just don't want to eat that chocolate. I'll give you the hot tip. Mm. Um, can we go from that to this? Santa's Wonderland. Oh. That's a much more wholesome space what for the kids, isn't it? What a perfect segue. Perfect little segue. Oh we were talking about Christmas. <laughs> Exclusive passes to Santa's Wonderland before it even opens to the public. We've got them. We're going to give them away inside the next five minutes. Now, yesterday after the show, um, we were having a private conversation and sometimes after the show, we'll just sort of sit there and you'll rattle off the things that you're really good at. <laughs> 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 they're long meetings, aren't they? Yeah, they're very, very long meetings. They sometimes drag into the evening. <laughs> uh, you were telling us how you're very, very good at reverse parking. Yes. Which I've seen in the flesh. Very uh-huh. impressive. Uh-huh. And then yesterday during the show, we were talking about um, Sienna Miller and Jude Law. Yep. And you were rattling off really eerie details of the affair that Jude Law had. With his nanny. Yeah, and we thought that must be just a bit of a fluke. Mm. But it turns out that's one of your superpowers. I have this really weird knack of remembering who's had affairs on who in Hollywood. It's so bizarre. So, so you reckon you can pretty much all the A-listers, I mean, you've got a good idea of where their marriage is potentially broken I could down. I try. And for some reason, like, when these things break and they happen, I, maybe because I've worked in radio so long, I don't know, I just engross myself mm. in what the hell's gone down. Okay. Um, should we put you to the test? Oh, why not? All right. Should we play a little bit of a game show? Okay. Okay. Let's launch into this. Let's have some fun. Who f- who is Jody and Hazy's celebrity cheese and quiz? You're pretty happy with that, aren't you? Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Probably the best thing we've ever done. Mm. All right, Jody, are you ready to play? So, wait, can I just clarify? Have all these people had affairs? They most certainly have. Well, okay. maybe they haven't. Oh, don't do that. Well, you know, you're the expert. Right. Oh no, I'm already regretting my um, self grandiose. Okay, go. Okay, first one. Are you ready to play? Yep. Gwen Stefani and Gavin Rossdale. Uh, did Gavin have an affair with a nanny? Oh reckon, my gosh, but, yes. But prior to that, prior, it was well known that he'd had an affair with a um, English singer who I think was a transvestite. Okay, thank you for the extra information. <laughs> I've just got in front of me here that he had an affair with a nanny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very good start. Okay, sure. Gavin Rostow, mm-hmm. you dirty bird. Mm. All right, next one. Yep. Maria Shriver <gasps> and... Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, Arnie, most definitely. I He definitely had an affair with the housekeeper and he may have knocked her up and had a love child. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> She's done it again. How do you know this guy? <laughs> I don't know that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was such a dirty bird. There seems mm. to be a theme here as well. Yeah. Um, if you're a celebrity... Uh, Keep it in your pants. Uh, don't, don't get help. No. <laughs> oh, yes. my gosh. Like, never don't get a sleep hot with the help. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yep. And do you know what? If you can't get this, because it's pretty broad. Yeah. Um, Ellen Nordegren. Oh, yes. And Tiger, Tiger Woods. Woods. Yeah. He cheated on her with multiple, multiple, multiple women. Some oh, she's done it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them were nightclub hostesses. One was Rachel Yucatel. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Because I remember when she um, came down for the Australian Masters mm. and they, the paparazzi took photos of her checking into the Crown Casino. And so that's how it all blew up. And then, if I correct me if I'm wrong, another one was, I reckon, Jamie Grubbs because he left a voicemail on her phone saying, hey, my wife's going to call you, Ellen's going to call you, she's been through my phone and um, I just need you to lie for me and delete the number. Um, that would be huge. I think his words were huge. Okay. I've just got here, he cheated with more than one woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you for the extra information. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got two more quick ones for you, okay? All right, go All right, on. here we go. Yep. Hugh Grant and Elizabeth Hurley. Who the hell would you? Oh, um, 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 Br- Brown. She was a she was a, 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 a worker, lady a lady of the night. Right. Um, um, 
Next. And it was, what's her first name? What's her first name? Oh, it starts with D. Anyway, uh, so they got caught in the back of a cab and I reckon police pulled them over, I reckon, and then he had a mug shot. Can you remember that mug oh, shot? I remember the mug shot. He wasn't happy. Yeah. He probably wouldn't be. Yeah. Even um, more suspicious if he, if he was smiling. So is that close enough? You got one more. You ready? You ready? Yeah. Reese Witherspoon and Ryan Felipe. Um, from memory, he had an affair or allegedly had an affair with an Aussie actress, Abby Cornish. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible, Jones. You just got three, four, six from six. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is actually quite incredible. Oh god! Well done. Some people have foot fetishes. I have celebrity affair fetishes. Congratulations! Okay. This, this is your superpower. Thank you so much. Now tell me, what's the difference between bought and brought? <laughs> Miley Cyrus is refuting allegations that her song Flowers plagiarised elements of Bruno Mars' hit <gasps> When I Was Your Man. What? Now, you would know more about this than than I do, the songwriting process. Mm. Isn't it a, like a team of people behind these superstars that actually write the songs? Well, I would say that depends on the quality of the artist. Right. Because sometimes you look at some of these artists and you go, that guy's an absolute genius. And then you find out it took a team of 10 people that had nothing to do with the artist that wrote the song yeah, and right. sold it to the company and gave it to the artist. So in this, on this occasion, would it be Miley that's responsible for plagiarising these lyrics or would it just be her team of, of minions? Yes, there's co-writers right. that put together Flowers okay. uh, by Tempo Music Investments and they're in a bit of strife. Okay, well, we will let you be the judge this morning. Uh, is Miley a dirty plagiariser? This is the lyrics to Bruno's When I Was Your Man and it goes like this. You flowers and held your hand. Should have gave you all my hours when I had the chance. Take you to every party, cause all you wanted to do was dance. Now my baby's dancing, but she's dancing with another man. Stunning. Stunning, Bruno. Well done, Bruno. Good lyrics, too. Well done. Uh, that was about a that. decade ago. Goodness me. Mm. All right. Now, this is the lyrics to Miley's Flowers, and the chorus goes like this. It's really similar. Instead of held your hand. Should have gave you all my hours. It's a good tune, and look, it's different enough that people would notice this, but there's a few question marks, and I just sort of wonder, it feels like, and I went to university, and I plagiarised a lot. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking a hell of a lot. Yep. And I got three P's, get the grease, baby, we all know that. <laughs> so if you're looking at Bruno's song, and you go, do you know what, change it just enough that they can't Google it, and it comes up identical, yep. I should have bought you flowers. Mm. I should have purchased you some sort of arrangement of roses, is what you could say, mm. and held your hand and mm. grabbed your foot, is what you could say instead. Yes. Should have gave you all my hours. Yeah. I should have given you all my time. Mm-hmm. Just little things like that. Just I feel like that's what Miley's done here. But no, I feel like it's, ch- yeah, okay, so it's changed just enough so it's not identical. Yeah. But I don't know. I just feel I, songwriters are on a hiding to nothing. There are so many songs. There are so many looks. Of course there's going to be crossover at some point. Yeah, but this is just... Uh, it's eerily similar, isn't it? Yeah, right. See, I feel like if you were trying to write or compose music, mm-hmm. that's when it can be a little bit tricky. Mate, how many different chord progressions can you come up with that are very unique? Mm. That's where I'm like, oh, geez, that's very, very tough. Yeah. But in this particular department, mm-hmm. I feel like you shouldn't do that. And on top of that, what if you're Miley Cyrus and you're like, oh, I've got a team of people <laughs> that put together these lyrics and they're all sitting there being like, let's copy Bruno's. <laughs> 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 let's get paid. That works, doesn't it? Joe, the last few days has been a little bit interesting because uh, we were just sort of politely having a bit of a chat about um, what sort of uh, wine people we are. Yes. Whether we're experts, whether we're novices, or whether we're somewhere in between. And um, I-, I just thought that it was pretty stock standard. Um, this is what was said just a couple of days ago. You and I often joke that we can't tell the difference between, a, say, a $500 Penfolds mm-hmm. and a $10 bottle of Stump Jump from Darrenburg. 100%. And mm-hmm. I- I've got to say that um, a $500 bottle of wine will never get anywhere near me. Mm. But I'd also say to them, don't bother. 
No. Give me the stumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Give me stump jump. Stump for life. That's what mm. we say. <laughs> stump mm. for life. We've always said that ever since we started. <laughs> yeah. We've been hounded by the wine snobs. Yeah, I know. Oh. We've copped a bit of criticism and I have just feel in my waters like we were about to cop a little bit more because oh. the funniest man I know who happens to know a heap about wine is Merrick Watson. He joins us now. Good morning, Merrick. I oh, know. Yes, I am the funniest person you know too, Jody. Thank you very much. Correct. That mm. was you get five points for getting that one correct. Yep. Uh, and Hazy, look, speaking of which, I mean, I know you say you, sh- you won't be drinking any Grange, mate. You shouldn't be drinking at all. You're sort of blows, <laughs> but seriously. Like, I mean, do you know what your wine is? Non-alcoholic. That's yeah. what your wine is. Get with that. <laughs> and I still get pissed off it. It's crazy. It's a real head yeah. thing. Hey, um, Merrick, you, yeah. you're like a proper wine snob, aren't you? Uh, I'm a qualified uh, wine sommelier. I've got a level three in wine, which is an international standard. And I'm also uh, a Barossa master. So, yeah, I mean, oh, I'm oh, several yeah. reasons why I'm... There's several reasons. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Several reasons why I'm better than you, Hazy. But, I mean, I, let's not go into all of them. <laughs> um, Merrick, how remiss yeah. of us is it to say that we can't tell the difference between a really expensive bottle of wine and just, oh. a, just an El Cheapo? Yeah, look, I'm, I hate to say Look, Stump Jump is excellent, by the way. That Derenberg Stump Jump, that's a nice, really affordable uh, bottle of wine. Thank no you. problem there at all. But you put that up against Grange, it is a little bit like a Fiat versus a Ferrari. I'm not going to lie. Like, there's there's a huge gap between the two of them. They both do the same job. They'll both get you the same direction. Mm. But uh, one of them's going to get you there with a little bit more style and comfort. Uh, a good wine, less of a hangover? Uh, no. No. You, you know what? You know, here's the thing. You know what gives you um, a hangover? Being a munter. That's what gives you a hangover. It's the amount of alcohol. It makes... It's, Always, like people say, oh, red wine makes me more hungover than white wine. Nah, it's it's alcohol. It's the amount of alcohol. I, Eric, I've done stories at Penfolds before where I've tried the thousand dollar bottle of wine, like their their old release, mm. and I and I just I feel is it just an education thing that I can just go, oh, okay, is that really a thousand dollars? No, look, honestly, I don't think it's an education thing. I, I think we could educate you as much as you like, and it still make no difference. You've got no palate. That's the problem. You've got absolutely <laughs> no ability to taste wine. It's a, it's a genetic thing. It's probably DNA. I don't know. I can't explain it. But if you can't tell the difference between a thousand dollar bottle of wine, you've got a problem. You should be able to taste the difference. But having said that, like, you know what? The difference between like a twenty dollar bottle of wine and a thirty dollar bottle of wine, almost nothing. A difference between a twenty dollar bottle of wine and a forty dollar bottle of wine, probably nothing. It, you kind of go from like from 20 once you get to 50 you'll start to notice that there's a bit of a difference in the wine right mm. i want to test how many wanky words wanky wine words that you know merrick so i'm about to give you a say 120 dollars bottle of shiraz and you taste it as many wanky wine words as you can come up with go oh leather uh cigar <laughs> box <laughs> cigar box um uh, sweaty saddle um, mm. What else you got in there? Mm. Uh, Tannins. Oak, cherry, um, ooh, scorched almonds. You can put anything in there. You know what? I've just described a chocolate bar. It makes no difference. You just use words and make them up as you go. What about, what about, what about goon bag? Does that work? Yeah, goon bag. Yeah, 100%. You know, you got you go, ooh, some light hints of aluminium foil. Ooh, that's nice. It's coming through. Mez, before we let you go, Grapes of Mirth are coming. It's the yes. 7th of December. Uh, we're going to be at Lloyd Brothers Wine. That's going to be fantastic. Yes. Back in McLaren Vale, which is fantastic. That's where Grapes of Mirth started many years ago, and it's great to be going back. I love McLaren Vale, as everyone knows. You guys, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, you can purchase tickets online, of course. Um, but uh, <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers. <laughs> We can't afford it. We spent all our money on Stump Jump. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know how much Stump Jump is nowadays, but it was always a very, very easy drinking, affordable wine. And well done to him. Hey, thank you, mate. We appreciate your time. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having a chat to me. I need to know. I need to know now. I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. What's in the news today? I need to know this. Here's what you need to know. I need to know. What you need to know with Jody and Hazy. Yeah, a couple of little bits of information we think needs to enter your brain before we start your working day. Can we start with the Adelaide 36ers? Yes, please. Finally, it is done. It's been a couple of weeks now since they played Melbourne United and there was an all righteous little... Um, Fracker. It's a fracas, a melee. A melee. Involving players, involving yeah. spectators. Yeah. So, of course, the players involved were Montrezl Harrell. He's been suspended mm-hmm. for uh, three games, and yes. Kedrick Davis has been suspended for two games. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sixers have accepted those sanctions, yeah. and yesterday the NBL um, banned one of the spectators for life. Yes. And another one for 10 years for 
from all NBL games and all venues. Yeah. Um, extraordinary thing. So I, I will say this. There is some suggestion that uh, the guys who were involved in the racial vilification and the homophobic slurs were, in fact, did have links to the underworld in Melbourne. So maybe it's why it took them a little while to hand down some penalties to the boys. Well... One bloke in particular still hasn't been identified. The guy who's been given a lifetime ban mm. is remains unidentified. Wow. So, okay. um, well, I don't know what's going on here. Are you, <laughs> do you know something? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't know why. It, I, okay, firstly, don't even start me on this again because I don't know why these Adelaide 36ers players have been punished after they were vilified both racially and with homophobic slurs. I don't understand how suddenly they've been banned, they've been fined. The Melbourne United players seem to have been gotten off scot-free as well. And also, do you know what's fascinating to me yesterday? Trez um, went on a rant on his Instagram page. The NBL reposted it. The NBL's official Instagram reposted Trez teeing off on the NBL. <laughs> now, so not only have you punished the man for being the most enter- entertaining thing that's happened to the NBL in years and years, but then you've turned around, you've gone, we're going to use his tee off as clicks. Yes. What as about clickbait. The, N- the NBL going, oh my God, guys, we just got trolled by Trez. <laughs> 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 Check this out. <laughs> How cool, by association. Oh, God. I'm going to stop talking about it because it just fires me up. It makes me very angry that the NBL haven't sent a message to the world. We will come down so hard on spectators who will behave in a disgustingly appalling matter. Yeah. And instead, we're going to punish the players. And I know they've handed out bans to these guys, but they can't even bloody find one of them. So <laughs> you're banned, whoever you are. Yes. No, quite seriously, quite seriously, his face now. They've got they, they've got a picture of his face. Yeah, right. And he's not allowed in the venues. Yeah, okay. So next time someone turns up and they've got one of those ridiculous sets of <laughs> nose and glasses on <laughs> and a fake moustache, it might be this bloke from Melbourne United. Oh, my God. What's this face? Just every bloke in a hoodie. Get out. Oh, <sighs> um, let's talk about Taylor Swift. Yes, please. What have you got? Okay, so thousands of Swifties have rushed to buy, and I do this in inverted commas that you can't see, listening only tickets to see her sold out Vancouver show. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, listening only? Listening I, I feel only like she's very much a visual product when you I'm, go see one of her shows. Yeah, you know when you um, go to a concert and they give you a map and they say, where do you want to sit? This is your op- option for these $16 tickets. That's the stage. Yeah. There you are, sitting oh. behind the stage. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's like, have you been sent to the timeout area of the stadium? Well, I know. It's like if you're in the naughty corner. Um, it's like, I guess, when you go to the Australian Open, the tennis, and you can sit on the lawn and watch it on a big screen. I mean, for goodness sake, stay at home. <laughs> have you got a big screen at least? I don't know, mate. I don't know. But you can hear her, and that's the main thing. The processing fee is 6 bucks, which is almost as much as the ticket. <laughs> oh, like, this is... Oh. So when the Foo Fighters were playing at Cooper Stadium, yeah. and I'm quite close to there, when I would say to people, oh, no, all good, I'm just going to listen to my backyard, mm. I'm, I'm taking the piss. Yeah. 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 People will pay money to do this with Taylor Swift, effectively. Look, look what it says there, no stage view seat. How cool. <laughs> hey, you... <laughs> no how was she? She sounded fantastic. She sounded awesome. <laughs> Hey, hey, how many costume changes were there? Well, screwed if I know. <laughs> Who's to say? <laughs>